go. So the tables have turned. I made a video that was very clear about how these YouTubers, I, and I brought up Jake Paul specifically, KSI. KSI and Jake Paul are professional boxers. The only thing that, in that video, right, I said the only thing that makes them any different from a professional boxer um, as we knew it, or as we know it, literally the only difference, or the only thing that makes them the, the, the difference between a YouTuber who's just playing around in the scene versus a professional boxer is the license. And the commission being involved in the matchmaking process and all that kind of stuff that, you know, happens behind the scenes before a fight gets made or even proposed or accepted. Um, you know, these, this is what makes them, this is what makes them professional fighters. Um, <clears throat> they have records on box rec. They have sanctioned fights. They have, you know what I mean? These, these people are being broadcasted on all of the boxing networks. You got Jake Paul on Showtime, Showbox, KSI on DAZN, Matchroom, DAZN. That's who broadcasts, um, fighters in the UK primarily. Eddie Hearn, all those guys, you know what I mean? So you have that. And now the you the youtubers um uh, people were saying that you know they can never be professional boxers they're disrespecting the sport they're doing a disservice to the sport but i would beg to differ okay so i have made this video all right september 3rd 2022 right and it's funny because i make a lot of videos that come full circle almost like the man whose video that i'm about to react to today which is champ side shout out champ side Right. He made a video because the boxers, ironically enough, are taking a page out of the YouTuber book, especially um, as of, you know, as of late, they go back and forth on Twitter about people who they want to fight and stuff like that. And they did that before. Twitter is like boxing second home. You know what I mean? Champsai had just said, you know, he that's a Champsai. He gave a very, very, very great breakdown of how, you know, what I mean, Twitter really is boxing second home. That's where a lot of things when it comes to fights being made or all this type type of stuff that's what that goes down um but somebody who was relatively unknown the week of his fight he sean davis right he fought on Shakur stevenson's undercard he was the co-main event you know what i mean he fought a guy who didn't have a very good record and everything like that because obviously obviously if you just get started you got to fight journeyman and you have to prove yourself you know what i mean um but he won by knockout of course and nobody really seemed to care but then he took to his Instagram live. He took to his Instagram live, much like how Jake Paul took to his Instagram live when his last fight before the one with Anderson Silva, his last fight got canceled because that fighter did not make weight. He took to his Instagram live. He proceeded to chat about Devin Haney, call him out his name. You know what I mean? Uh, all these types of things, right? And I'm not, I don't want to react to every video of all of this type of stuff because I'm not a boxing journalist. I just like boxing. I follow it heavily. I follow it thoroughly. I really like watching these fights after watching the build up. I like seeing all the stuff behind the scenes that just raises the stakes of these fights. So me, I'm already know who who Frank um I already know who Frank Mason is. I already know who um uh Keyshawn Davis is. I'm already knowing who, you know, Shushu is, I'm already knowing who Tiger is, I'm already knowing who uh Amari Jones is, all these guys that are on the up and come are up and coming. I know who these guys are so it doesn't it's not very surprising to me to see all these things happen but he, Keyshawn Davis went semi-viral because he went on his Instagram live called Devin Haney out his name and all this type of stuff and that's the type of stuff that builds hype for fights so because he went ahead and, and he, he he used his right to social media he uses his right to call out people and kind of stir up some ruckus it built his career you know what I mean it built it it, it gave him a whole nother lease on life in his career because now his promotion, uh, his promotional company, top rank, they're seeing, hey, you know, this guy, he got some, he, he has, uh, he's very passionate, you know what I mean? He's willing to do those call outs. He's willing to help us promote the fight. He's willing to do all these things because you have to realize, bro, if you're, if you're just good at fighting, this is in the fight business, it's about entertainment. It's not just about, you know what I mean? It's, it, it's, it's the reason why these YouTubers are willing, are able to have fights with relatively, um you no know, unskilled talent which is kind of an oxymoron but relatively unskilled talent and they're able to sell out arenas 
or you know as, as far as jake paul and ksi are concerned you guys are amateur at best they're not high level they're not high but they're willing to take those risks make those fights go out on their shield and talk the way they do and now the you the, the boxers are taking a page out of the youtubers book they call Keyshawn, and Keyshawn davis's nickname is the businessman doing very good business in and doing these call outs with Devin Haney but uh, you know Devin Haney and talking to Errol Spence and in that <clears throat> he's scared of Terrence Crawford and all this kind of stuff but this was a good watch because Champ side he made a really good point I want to address the Keyshawn Davis Instagram live and all of the blowback from it and I want this to be a lesson to not only boxers, but also the audience. And I think this is a great case study in something that has been echoed many a times. Keyshawn Davis got more publicity and more attention from his Instagram live days after his boxing match than he got. I said Frank Mason, I meant Frank Martin. My bad, I was playing, <clears throat> I was literally, I was playing Black Ops. I don't know why, like, Mason is just in my head right now, but I meant Frank Martin. So, but that's who that is in the top left corner. Frank Martin is an up-and-comer in the 135 division. And the reason why, you know, it, 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 kind of, it kind of is like a whole thing going on. But Keyshawn Davis is underneath Shakur Stevenson, who's underneath Terrence Crawford. And then Frank Martin is in Errol Spence Jr.'s camp with Derek uh James he trains with Derek James and Errol Spence and all that and he's really really good at 135 um I believe that Keyshawn Davis is also at 135 and he's also a really good up and comer so you know Frank Martin has I, I, I believe his record is like 11 I don't know if it's 11 or no I think it might be 11 and 0 now and um Keyshawn Davis just finally got his or just got his 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 um he won his latest fight by knockout he's not far behind frank martin so when people are telling him you know hey what about frank martin what about frank martin i would want to see that on the uh undercard of spence crawford if any that would make sense because it would just be like generation generational beef between those sides you know what i mean and um the reason why i wouldn't say Devin is for one he's probably about to move up to 140 but two because that whole you know like um master protege dynamic doesn't exist with Errol spence and devin haney devin haney just kind of doing his own thing if they do fight one day hey you know what i mean but right now i don't think that he got devin as far as him and frank martin if i'm being honest i don't know if he has frank martin frank martin is really good really good so if you do, if you don't know already you should definitely do your research on those guys it's funny that he put roly romero here because Rolly Romero is one of those guys that, you know, he's the epitome of biting off more than you can chew. He talks a whole lot of trash. Doesn't He didn't back up any of it. He got knocked out, matter of fact, by Javante Tank Davis after talking all that stuff. And uh, he's still going to talk trash because he's Rolly. You know what I mean? That's how he stays relevant. But as far as talent goes, he does not belong on this. But champ side is cheeky, bro. The entire <laughs> he knows what he's doing of his boxing match and when he actually boxed. And so what I was saying is one day people will understand how the internet works, right? Everyone gets upset with Jake Paul because Jake Paul came to boxing. No, Jake Paul is an internet sensation, meaning that he can take his show to the WWF. He can try out for the Cleveland Browns and it'll get attention. He could try out for the Cleveland Cavaliers. It'll get attention. He could try out, try out for the Cleveland Guardians. It'll get attention. Whatever Jake Paul does, it will get attention. Boxers don't seem to understand this. And I'll say this again. Based on the content I've made over the years on a daily, on a daily basis and looking at the analytics, the majority of people that watch boxing, right? You have your hardcore boxing fans, which you will always have, but that's a very small percentile. The majority of the people only care for the for a handful of boxers. For a handful of boxers. Everyone else is kind of just like supporting cast. And what these fighters need to be doing is doing something outside of boxing to capture the minds of the people. 
Getting skills pay the bills, but they don't pay the most. Attention pays the most, right? Ask any real MC in hip hop who had a hard time getting through to the mainstream and selling uh, uh, labels didn't want to mess with them because they're not a platinum artist, but a 6ix9ine is. Right? Why is 6ix9ine? Why was he so attention? Attention. It's not about skills, it's about attention. So now that Keyshawn Davis have really called out, you know, said what he said, you know, oh, Arrow need to worry about Crawford and you're going to get Frank Martin stepped on and Roley is squeak man and Devin uh Devin ain't you know what you know the things he said about Devin and I don't need a father holding my hands so regardless if you like what he said or not you realize that you commented right you realize that you watched it right bruh it don't matter and that right there is exactly what I was trying to say in my video tension does pay the most why is that because the thing that the whole one of the things that boxers try to do the most with all of their little promotion like you look at somebody like ryan garcia he has fans although he doesn't even fight more than he, he barely had the fast to fight he fought one time in two years i think or a year because i know the last year he didn't fight he pulled out of like two three fights he didn't fight against uh manny pacquiao he didn't fight against uh javier fortuna and he claimed uh and but he was talking a lot of trash and he still has a fan base who thinks that he's the best in the division whether they know about the sport or not i mean i can't say that you know the media you know what i mean now when it comes to the media they play a hand in some of that stuff because they protect certain fighters they make sure that they that the fighters that that they are that are the most popular to them primarily non-black fighters and um get that publicity and they also get the protection that keeps them from getting exposed any little win they get whether it's valid or not they hype it up on their instagram pages and one thing about top rank that i respect is that they post Keyshawn davis going to work they post shakur david uh shakur stevenson going to work they posted devin haney going to work but attention can overpower or change or turn the tides of any moment that anybody thinks that they have if something else gets it like bro look I, I locked in and watched those YouTuber fights. And that Austin McBroom fight, there was a lot of there's a lot behind that that millions of subscribers were following up to this point. These these YouTubers have more followers and subscribers than all of these athletes. And the NBA, it's the same thing, bro. You got your your top 10, your top 15, and then everybody else is just kind of supporting cast. Just like how Champ Side has stated it. You know what I mean? So here's the thing. I'm, and I'll close with it. There cannot be any more slander about because look, what's the video called, man? YouTube slander ends because it does. It did at that point, and now my points come around full circle, man. I explained. I explained myself out the way. I explained how very thoroughly in the video because look at this man these guys got you know, he got 18 rounds under his belt five victories four ko's this dude has one professional fight under his belt and he's already fought before he fought against logan paul so that just shows one was for entertainment one was not real this other one they're starting to have sync they're starting to sanction their fights they're starting to take this seriously now you know what i mean they're starting to do their due diligence in order to be recognized in the scene trying to fight better talent all right ksi beat on a professional boxer i don't know what to tell you bro whether he was he wasn't big enough strong enough they waited the, they weighed the same amount and one guy was a professional so hey you know what i mean what do you want me to do but that's neither here nor there the point is what more can you say about these youtube boxers when they're hosting bigger events making more money as a, as a conglomerate they have their own rankings now they have their own rankings now they have their own top 20 i think uh, not even all 20 slots are filled up which is crazy but you know what i mean you go go and watch you can go watch all of them fights on the zone's youtube channel you know what i mean it's it's crazy how these worlds are starting to collide and i like it because there's there's people that you know they're willing to talk trash and and have that whole look they they understand how to create content and to promote 
So it just makes it all that much sweeter. Not very many people watch the buildups in these boxers' fights, bro. Like, ESPN and Showtime, they have buildups for the week of the fight. Most people don't even know that. They post them on YouTube. Most people don't even know that. All these YouTubers got to do is literally post. Like, bro, I'll even show you how much of a bigger picture this is. Because, um, what was it? Floyd. Yeah, yeah, this guy right here. I bet y'all didn't even know this. Why, you know what I mean? The reason why that this guy was even, even fought Floyd in the first place. I bet you he doesn't even know why. I bet y'all don't even know why. Floyd fought him because this fool has 2 million subscribers in Japan. And he's already fought in Japan before. You got 2 million subscribers in Japan. He goes to Japan. He's Floyd Mayweather. Japan, look. And then what made it even sweeter was that racist moment where they threw the flowers at his feet. So that was even more sensational. You think Floyd is mad about that in the bigger picture? Look, man, we black, man. We know about this racism. We know about it. It's nothing new. So look, this guy that he fought, people are like, oh, he's blah, blah, blah. He's no... Bro, his videos is getting 3 million views. His view, his, bro, three days ago, this fool is doing Jake Paul numbers down. But he's an actual MMA fighter. 1.5, 1.7, 1.4, 1.1, 1.1, 3 million. Where he talked about the fight with Floyd. This, this is just going to make everybody go watch it. Floyd is a genius with this bigger picture stuff, man. So, this is what I'm saying. Because this guy does both YouTube and, and fights professionally. Just like Jake Paul, just like KSI. So... Can we just, let's not continue to slander because you can't and at this point. It's impossible. Now the worlds are starting to collide because boxers understand if you can't beat them, join them. All right. And at the end of the day, if boxers start creating content and promoting and using these, these YouTube channels like Champside and Dante's Boxing Nation to promote their fights, they'll be able to see the type of numbers and then grow. The way that they are, you know, these YouTubers are. Because whoever, this guy, he got hit early. Or, you know, apparently he got hit to it. And he blew up. So, if Devin Haney or any of these guys, you know what I mean? Look at Ryan Garcia with his channel, his vlog. You know, he does vlogs and all these types of things. He got popular. You know what I mean? He getting money for not even having to fight. From a boxing standpoint, I'm not a fan of the guy. But you can't knock that. There's no way. But, uh, you know, that was just my opinion, man. It was funny that I seen these the, the Keyshawn Davis situation. Then Champside gets his opinion. And he, Champside is a hardcore boxing guy. He's done interviews with all of these guys. You know what I mean? He's tapped in for real. He did an interview with Frank Martin. Tapped in with Dev. He's, he coined the term, they say everything but let's fight. Everybody's saying press one in the boxing community. His intro is littered with boxers. I mean, you can't negate a guy like this. His opinion about saying, look at Jake Paul. They're getting attention. Attention pays. Get more attention. How can you hate that? You can't. So, anyway. That was just my opinion, like I said. Um, do man. Go ahead and subscribe. Like. Leave a comment. And as these things continue to blur, or, you know, as these lines continue to be blurred, I'm going to be here to report on that. You know what I mean? But definitely go follow Champsai. He's If you want to get into the boxing, go watch his videos. This fool has been... He's, he's five years ahead of the game when he makes videos. You know what I mean? This dude is like Hove with this. Not gonna lie. You know? Um, you know, not even no D writing stuff. We just giving our flowers while people are alive. It's just that simple. Um, that being said, man, I'm out. I'll catch you on the next video, man. Peace.